Hi there everybody, it's Max here again with you, Max. Today we got another special video for you. This time we're gonna be doing a video on the Einscan Regal. We're gonna be showing you how to scan your car or truck with the scanner. This video will be a great tutorial for how to scan vehicles in general and also just a great showcase for the scanner's abilities. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna be scanning my entire truck, so let's do it. Scanning your car or truck with any scanner usually starts with placing markers. So let's go ahead and place ours before we start. You want to place them in a random pattern and keep in mind that your scanner wants to see at least four of them at a time or else it won't be able to find where it is. Remember that you can always put more markers on your objects even during your scan. Now let's go ahead and look at our settings before we begin the scanning process. For the exterior, we're going to use the laser mode in order to take advantage of the laser scanning ability to scan reflective materials so well. So we don't bog down our scanner with a large file size, we're going to scan in a lower resolution. Larger objects like these typically won't need very high detail. For our alignment mode, we're going to be using global markers. This will make it so that before we scan our object for real, we do a dedicated marker scan before. This will serve as our scanner's guide for locating its own position while scanning, as well as aligning our project's groups together. This scan can be quickly done with little worry or skill, and it gives you an opportunity to see if you have enough markers in each and every little area as you try to maintain tracking throughout your subject. As previously mentioned, scanners build up inaccuracy over long distances, so when you come back around to the other markers you've already scanned, you might discover that there's double sets of markers. A few isn't a big deal, but many can cause some issues, so try to avoid it. After we're done, press the button in the top right to save your marker file. You can open this marker file later in different project groups. Let's continue with this one though and start scanning for real. This button will allow more markers to be appended to our scan as we scan. For the first one, we're going to be scanning the passenger side of the truck. It might take a moment to recognize the markers in such a large marker file, so just hold the scanner still and give it a moment. If it doesn't work after 5 to 10 seconds, then try an area with more markers, or try to adjust your distance a little. Very important, make sure you ensure that the reflective material mode is on, which can be found right here under the lighting settings. When it begins to actually start picking up data, just keep the scan steady. Keep an eye on your scan distance, work around different angles slowly, and make sure your data looks nice and complete and that it looks blue. This indicates complete data. When you get to the windows, you can usually scan the tinted ones. Try to keep the angle head on and direct. Look for the visibility of the laser lines on your subject. A good rule of thumb is that if you can see the lasers, then so can the scanner. But it's important to understand that completely clear surfaces might require scanning spray or a similar solution. Try not to move the car or even load the suspension during this process. So if you need to stand on a step to scan the roof like me, then save it for last. Once we're done with one side, we'll do any data cleanup necessary. Optionally, we can also save it for when we're on the PC for more precise tooling. We'll press complete and it will automatically add a new group to the project. Be careful not to press the button that starts a new project altogether. It looks like a folder with a plus on it. Now, let's add our marker file under the scan settings. Now let's continue by scanning the bed. Nothing really new here as far as technique. Without this common marker set, we would be scanning new markers per scan group we do, which aren't very reliable due to the 3D scanner's tendency to build up inaccuracies over long distances. Either that or you can complete the whole object in one single scan group, but that gets kind of slow after a while. Instead, we scan in parts. Each one of the parts under the same project using the same marker file, which is then used to align all the parts together. All right, we're done with this part. So just like the last one, we're going to press complete to start a new project group inside our project file. And then we're going to import our marker file.
Now let's move to the driver's side. And while we're scanning the driver's side, we'll also get the front of the car. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and do the roof. Now that's it for doing the exterior. We're doing the interior in a separate project because spoilers, we're gonna be using IR mode for it. And you can't have an IR mode scan and a laser mode scan in the same project, I'm afraid. So to finish our exterior model, let's switch to the PC application. Upon opening our file, we'll discover our scans are already aligned together. But if for any reason they aren't for you, we'll go ahead and generate our point clouds for all the project groups and press this button to align our groups together one by one. Use automatic marker alignment here, of course. Now let's clean up any messy data we've left and mesh. Now it's time for the interior scan. This part is much more straightforward. No need to scan in pieces, no need for markers. Just put on feature and texture hybrid tracking in the settings and go for it. It's pretty easy to feel out the appropriate distance. Just try not to move too fast or change angles too suddenly or you could get some ghost data. We're no longer using markers for tracking now. The scanner is trying to figure out where it is all on its own. So beware of things like patterns or symmetry. Don't be afraid to introduce new geometry to break it up if that becomes a problem, but it's quite unlikely. If any of your data becomes ruined by any such occurrences, then make sure to make use of the rewind feature to rewind time and bring your model back to its previous state. After we're done with that, all that's left is to clean up, export, and mesh. You can also edit your data in mesh on the scanner if you so desire, but I recommend doing it on PC for the extra power and features. One important thing to note is that if you're going to be scanning in color and you want the color to look good, make sure to have consistent lighting throughout your environment. It can be hard to get consistent lighting in the interior of a car, but it's important if you really need the color to look great. Otherwise, you might see some inconsistent saturation or brightness, though these things can always be fixed in post-processing, of course. All right, and so we have completed scanning each part of our truck, exterior and interior. We have a couple different models separating the laser and the IR scans. Those can be combined in separate post-processing software if desired, but typically these scans are more useful separate. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about the EinScan Regal and scanning automotive. So if you're interested in your own scanner, make sure you head to emacs.com for amazing deals, free training, and accessories. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.